Hi, my name is Adrian William, and today's video is for all the foreign trained dentists, for students who are applying to dentist schools and have been thinking about letter of recommendation. And I've been getting a lot of questions regarding letter of recommendations when uh, students are applying through ADIA CAPED when they are filling in their form and they have to in idea cap it so it provides you an option of three evaluators or recommended who can write a letter of recommendation for the applicant so candidates ask me who should be the people who should write you the recommendation or what should they write and these kind of questions so i'm going to talk about the letter of recommendation part and after that i'm going to talk about supplemental application so when you're applying to schools and it may vary from school to school but most of the majority of the schools will ask you some questions uh, for example university of colorado when you're filling in their application they ask you to write down a whole uh, person statement for 3500 characters and they ask you what were the weakness in the previous dentist school that you went to and if you're applying to ucla they ask you what's the meaning of professionalism to you or uh, if you're applying to SIU they can ask you what inspired you the most or which person inspired you in life or if you're applying to if you're applying to schools like Boston University they will ask you uh, why do you think you would be a good fit for Boston University Dental School so Pretty much all schools have different kind of questions. Loma Linda has a bunch of long questions in which they ask you about your faith related questions, why you want to go into dentistry and these kind of things. So I'll be talking about letter of recommendation and then supplemental applications as well. So what you can do to prepare well for your CAPID application. Coming to you, uh, letter of recommendation. So CAPID allows you to upload three uh, letters now people ask me who should be the people or who should be the recommenders or evaluators or the referees who should write for you so the first one that all dental schools in u.s requires from foreign trained dentists like me like you is that you should have one letter from the dean of your previous dental school where you did your bds or dds back home so you have to get a letter of recommendation from your dean on your letterhead now the case becomes a little bit complex when people text me or ask me that the dean has left the school or the dean is not there anymore who used to teach us and there is a new dean well in this case my suggestion is that you should still get the letter of recommendation from the current dean or somebody who's the acting dean of your school because what the dentist schools are looking is actually they are trying to verify and confirm the authenticity of your dental degree because look at from a u.s perspective a lot of people can uh, fake their degrees they can forge false documents so they want to verify that you did the dental degree so i would recommend even if your dean has changed get a letter of recommendation from the acting dean or the current dean on a letterhead that's very important and i keep repeating this every time that when you're getting this letter of recommendation from your back home countries you want to make sure your dean uploads it on time because i know a lot of these countries where deans are busy or they are not very tech savvy or they don't really care about your timeline so whatever it takes if you have to travel if you have to send a relative if you have to talk to the secretary of the dean whatever it requires make sure you get your letter of recommendation uploaded on time the second thing i'll tell you is that now when it comes to the rest of the two letter of recommendation it can vary from person to person and depending on their experience there is not always one formula that will work for everybody so if you're somebody who never came to us who never did dentistry in us or any work maybe getting your all your letter of recommendation from back home would be the best option you have and even amongst them look for organizations that are internationally accredited places which are internationally renowned or have some kind of reputation uh, reputation 
try to get letter of recommendations from those kind of places. But if you have come to US, you have done dental assisting, you have done a master's, you've done some kind of shadowing or dental hygiene or research, I would encourage you to get the other two letter of recommendation from uh, people in US, from dentists from US. In my case, my one of my letters was from my dean, the other one was from a dentist that I shadowed, and the third one was from the CFO of Mission of Mercy, who also happened to be my professor of master's in health administration. So that person not only wrote about my volunteer work that I was doing with Mission of Mercy, but also wrote that I was a student in his master classes. So that kind of killed two birds with one stone. And you have to see in your given situation, for example, I know people who did preceptorship at Boston or some other university, and I encourage them, while you're going in for that preceptorship, try to find a professor who would be willing to write you a letter of recommendation because that will mean a lot if a professor, academic faculty in United States of a dental school is willing to write you a letter of recommendation that will hold a lot of value, more value than a GP who's just practicing privately. So look into your circle. What are the places that you have worked in? It could be a master's program. It could be a volunteer work that you have done. Look for amongst them, who is the person who's willing to write you a letter of recommendation? And what you want to do is find a person who's actually keen and encouraging in your journey. So you might be able to get a letter of recommendation from a person who's an American dentist, but they don't really care about you and are just going to write three lines in it. On the other hand, you know somebody who's much more uh, involved in your journey, who's invested in your success and is willing to write a little bit more. I would suggest find somebody who's willing to write more in your letter of recommendation and who's devoted to your journey. The next thing I'll tell you is that uh, sometimes what happened, I went to a GP, I said, can you write me a letter of recommendation? And he said, uh, can you write me a draft? I'm a, I'm a very busy person. You write me a draft. I'll just copy paste it, print it out, sign, and I will upload it. And sometimes you have to write a draft for them. My suggestion is if you have to write a draft for yourself, make sure you, first of all, think from a perspective that if you were an American professional, how would you write it down? Don't write it down like a student. Your draft should be professional, should be brief, should be straight to the point. And you want to mention qualities that you feel like already mentioned in your personal statement, some work activities that you have done. It may be you have done 3D scanning with that person or you have made temp crowns with that person. So those are the kind of things or uh, radiographic uh, techniques that you've learned during while working with that person or you learned about treatment planning. Whatever you learn or your experience with that person, you can mention that in the draft as well. Now, the other question I get is people ask me that we are getting these three letters. Uh, and should I be getting a fourth one or a fifth one? My suggestion in that case is yes, have a fourth or fifth one uh, as a backup. It can be from your uh, faculty back home. It can be from a uh, place where you did volunteer work because schools like University of Indiana requires you to send one letter of recommendation from a nonprofit organization where you worked at. So keeping a fourth or fifth one as a backup is a good thing and whenever needed you can ask your evaluator to directly email it to the school when needed. So yes, have a fourth one as a backup because sometimes these faculty or people won't upload on time so you want to have that uh, next one as a backup and the other thing you could do is that make sure whenever they upload this whenever they upload the document it's signatured because I've mentioned this in my early video as well it happened to me where my 
letter of recommendation was uploaded and then University of Indiana emailed me that there are no signatures on the letter of recommendation. So I had to call my uh, evaluator again. He had to sign it again and upload it and email it to all the schools. And then I had to inform them that there is a new document uploaded. Kindly see it and make sure that it's signature and you got the updated document. That's an important factor as well. And amongst all of this process, here's the key thing I tell everybody is that your professionalism, how you communicate with your evaluators, how you communicate with the school is very important because in all of this situation, you're a student, you're a candidate and you are requesting people. So you want to be brief, you want to respect their time and you want to get it done in the most professional manner possible. So do not annoy people, do not try to push them, do not try to step on people's toes while uh, you're trying to desperately get into a school. So be very careful about that because I've seen people who get a little bit more energetic and then wanna get it done and they become pushy, but be careful with your communication. Now, the next part I'm gonna talk about is a supplemental application, which I've already talked about. So I tell people, if you're going to apply to 10 schools, 12 schools, make sure you research on them even before you apply. So you should know them. You should reach out to the current student people who graduated from there. You should add some kind of homework done. I tell people, keep a notebook for yourself. And on note, that notebook, write down notes of each and every school, whatever you've learned, if you traveled up there, if you read something on YouTube on google on social media from the student make notes so you have some kind of homework that you have done on that school now the second thing is when you're writing your supplemental application people think if a school allowed you 1000 words or characters to write i need to write everything don't do that first of all thoroughly read what the question is and then go to the school website and read about the school, what the school is looking, look at their faculty, look at their mission value, look at the history of the school, what was the school built upon, what was their idea. So that will kind of give you a little bit understanding about the school, their perspective, even before you write down that answer. The other thing I'll say is subconsciously, a lot of people, most of us judge each other each other's intelligence based on our writing. So the way you think can be interpreted the way you write down things. That shows how your mind process things. So when you're writing down things, you need to understand that the reader is gauging your sense of intelligence, your sense of communication and clarity through the words that you're writing. So what you wanna do is be brief in your writing. This is the most important thing I'm saying in this video. If you can take this away, I think this this is the most important part of the video. Be brief. Brevity is the key. If you're writing down things, you want to be respectful. Just because they give you 1000 word limit doesn't mean you have to fill out 1000 word limit. Doesn't mean you have to repeat your resume. Doesn't mean you have to repeat your personal statement all over again. You want to briefly answer the question they are looking for with some kind of story or some kind of attribute of your life or some kind of example backing that up. If, for example, uh, UCLA asks you what is one of the key thing uh, amongst all uh, attributes that you like, whether it's professionalism, integrity, honesty. And if I say uh, professionalism is the key most thing because I grew up in a house where uh, it was taught to me that uh, in order to achieve your goal, you have to respect your profession, your colleagues and your environment and you have to be, you have to present yourself in the most professional manner and work on it every day to improve it. Now, you're talking about professionalism or one of the attributes, you're explaining your answer, but you're giving some kind of personal story attached to it. That's very important. So in all the supplemental applications, even before you write your answers, do your homework. 
do the homework regarding that school you want to be brief now i know ucsf has a very long question they ask you clinical questions about tell us about a root canal that you did number of root canals you did what was the best case you did so they ask you these kind of questions as well but in all of them the answers by the end of the day can the main thing that you want to remember the way you write is going to show the way you think and if you write very long essays with repetitive same sentences that just show that you're not respecting their time and your thoughts are not clear. So this is a key mistake I see in people's uh, supplemental application. So when you're writing, make sure you research the schools. You write down things in a brief manner, straight to the point that shows that you're respecting the school and you're actually also helping them in getting done with the process fast. I'm not saying skip things, write one-liners. You want to have some good matter in your answers. You want to show some uh, qualities in your personality, in your story, in your profile, but you want to write it in a way that's brief and respectful. So those are just some of the key things uh, that can help you out. Obviously, there are a lot of schools and I can't go into detail of explaining each and every school's answer. But if you have any question on any of the schools, you can write it down in the comment. I can help you out to whatever best advice I would be able to give you with the, with the time I have. I'll try to write it down. But I would like to know which supplemental application you found the most difficult or you need help with. You can write it down in the comment box and I'll try to get back to you. And if you like this video, if you found it valuable, kindly do hit the like button, do comment because that helps the YouTube analytic for other people like you to find this video and they can make the best out of too. And plus, personally, I don't make any money from making YouTube videos, but your comments, uh, hitting the like button or sharing this really makes, uh, it makes my day. It actually makes me feel good. It gives me the energy on the weekend to get out of my bed, put on this code and make a new video for you. So hopefully I'll try to bring some more valuable content to you and uh, see you in the future. All the best.